JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 15th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research uh, here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to, uh, a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar pulled back against uh, most of its uh, major peers on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained only versus CAD and NZD in that order, while it lost the most ground against JPY, Euro, the Euro and the Swiss franc. Uh, the weakening of the US dollar suggests that market sentiment may have improved at some point yesterday or today in Asia. However, the strengthening of the safe havens yen and franc points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices traded unchanged or lower, with uh, concerns over high inflation around the globe intensifying after the UK CPIs followed the footprints of the US ones and accelerated by more than anticipated. The only exceptions were the Eurostox uh, 50 and Italy's uh, FTSE. Uh, excuse me, uh, Nitalis Food CMIB, which uh, gained somewhat. In, uh, in the US, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 traded slightly higher, with the latter hitting a fresh record high. However, Nasdaq ended its trading lower. Market sentiment was somewhat more improved uh, during the Asian session today. Although Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 fell 0.98%, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's uh, KOSPI traded in the green. Yesterday, when, tens when testifying before Congress's House of Representatives uh, Financial Services Committee, Fed Chief Powell said that uh, the US economy is still a ways off from levels uh, the committee wants to see before, uh, before the start of uh, normalizing monetary monetary policy. He also added uh, that uh, he believes uh, that the recent rally in inflation is due to the nation's post-pandemic reopening and that it will prove to be temporary. That said, with data the day before showing that underlying inflation pressures hit uh, their highest since November 1991, many participants may have found it difficult to rely on, uh, to rely on his remarks. That's why equities did not uh, rebound confidently, and although the US dollar pulled back, the yen and the franc remained supported. This was also evident by the fact that market participants did not alter much their bets over when they expect the Fed to hit the hike button. Ahead of Powell's testimony, they were anticipating such a move to take place in January 2023. In the aftermath, the timing was moved just a month back. In other words, expectations are now for the first uh, Fed hike to happen in February 2023. As uh, for our view, we are reluctant to rely on Powell uh, as well. Many Fed members have already expressed their desire for raising interest rates as soon as next year, while most importantly underlying inflation, which excludes volatile items such as energy and food, has more than doubled the Fed's objective of 2%. So how much of this is transitory? We believe that uh, the US dollar could rebound again soon, but we don't expect equities to fall. We may see some pullbacks, but we stick to our guns that now investors are likely to to pay, uh, excuse me, to stay more focused on second quarter earnings, with expectations pointing to decent results. Today, Powell will, will, uh, will deliver the same testimony before the Senate Banking Committee, but uh, we don't expect any surprises. 
he will stick uh, to the view that it's too early to start normalizing policy and that's why we don't believe that we will see strong market moves today. Now, apart from uh, Powell's uh, testimony, we also had a Bank of Canada monetary policy decision uh, yesterday. Canadian policymakers kept uh, their interest rates unchanged and reduced further their quantitative easing purchases uh, to two billion uh, to two billion dollars per week from three billions, as uh, was uh, broadly expected. However, still the Canadian dollar fell after the decision to be found as the main uh, loser among the major currencies this morning. Now, a review given that the tapering was largely anticipated, loony traders focused on other parts in the statement and specifically on the part saying that, um, that officials continue to see output uh, gap closing in, in, uh, in the second half of uh, 2022. What's more, at the press conference following the decision, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, Macklem said that the outlook is not really that different from April. It seems that uh, cut traders may have been looking for, uh, for something more hoggish, perhaps something to suggest uh, that the interest rates are likely to be lifted earlier than previously thought. However, saying that the output gap is still expected to close at the same time as was forecast in April means that uh, the estimated timing for a rate hike has not changed. Now, our view yesterday's decision changes uh, the narrative around the loony. Following a very, a very hoggish uh, RBNZ, we believe that the Canadian currency may now well underperform the Kiwi, even if it performs somewhat better against the Aussie due to the dovish RBA. We believe that the loony could continue underperforming even against the US dollar as from what we saw yesterday, investors may have remained unconvinced that the Fed will be patient in deciding to start scaling back uh, monetary policy support. Many of them could still be expecting a quantitative easing tapering process to start in the next few months. So long story short, we do believe that Kiwi cut will strengthen in the foreseeable future, but we also see decent chances for dollar cut to continue drifting north for a while more as well. Now, as uh, for today's events, uh, during the Asian session, we already got Australia's employment report for June, as well as China's GDP for the second quarter, which was accompanied by the fixed asset investment, industrial production and retail sales all for the month of, uh, of uh, June. Australia's unemployment rate fell by more than expected, but the net change in employment showed that the economy added less uh, jobs than anticipated. Now, our view, this is unlikely to tempt uh, the RBA to take off its uh, dovish stress. As uh, for the Chinese uh, data, although the Chinese economy slowed uh, by more than expected in year-over-year -year terms, the quarter-over-quarter -quarter rate was higher than its own forecast. While industrial production, fixed asset investment, and, re and retail sales all showed, all, excuse me, all slowed uh, by, by less than expected, adding to the view that the world's uh, second largest economy has performed very well during the period. This may have been the catalyst behind the increased risk appetite during the Asian trading today. Now tonight, during the Asian session Friday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Japan. Its latest meeting resulted in uh, no fireworks, with officials maintaining their policy unchanged and extending the deadline for pandemic-related programs by six months, as was mainly expected to happen at uh, that gathering or the one scheduled uh, for this week. With both Japan's uh, headline and core inflation rates around the zero mark, we don't expect the bank to adopt a similar stance to other major central banks and start sending signals uh, with regards to whether and when it could start uh, normalizing its policy. We expect policymakers to keep their foot on the extra loose uh, pedal and perhaps signal that they are willing to leave it uh, there for long. Although under normal uh, circumstances and uh, Dovish language may have been proven uh, negative uh, for the Japanese yen, we don't expect the yen to suffer much uh, to suffer much excuse me to suffer much after the decision, especially if uh, FX traders start repricing an earlier tightening uh, uh, by the Fed um, by uh, yeah, by the Fed. What is over the Delta coronavirus variant could also keep uh, this safe haven currency supported. 
As for the speakers, besides Fed Chair Powell, who will repeat his testimony, we will also get to hear from Chicago Fed President Charles Evans, ECB Executive Board Member Frank Elterson, and Bank of England MPC Member uh, Michael Sanders. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.